So today's lesson, we are going to do implicit differentiation. It's one of two bonus lessons I'm going to do for all, everyone. And the idea is pretty much up until now, what we've been doing is finding the derivative of functions, right? such as uh, x squared minus 3x. But what about a relation like a circle? Well, you could find the derivative of a circle if you split it up explicitly for y, meaning you either choose this top half of your semicircle, which would be plus the square root of r squared minus x squared, or you choose the bottom half. Either one of these is um, a function, and then you can differentiate that explicit function for y. But there's another way to do this. And not only will it help us with relations, since we've been doing exponential functions, it'll help us figure out what the derivative of a logarithmic function is. So let's go look at how we're going to do this. So let's say we have this circle, x squared, x squared plus y squared equals 25, and we want to find the derivative. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to differentiate both sides of the equation with respect to x. We can do that. Just like you can multiply both sides of an equation by the same number, you can um, differentiate both sides of the equation with respect to the same variable. So we're going to take d by dx of the left and d by dx of the right. And then using our um, derivative properties, we can sort of um, distribute this through. So here we have d by dx of x squared plus d by dx of y squared. Now, x squared is easy to work with. Derivative of x squared with respect to x, well, that's 2x. Same with over here. The derivative of the constant or value 25 with respect to x, well, that's just 0. But what about y squared? Well, what we're going to have to do here is apply the chain rule. So we're going to change d by dx into d by dy multiplied by dy by dx. Notice that this is still d by dx, because if I were to cancel out the d by dy's on the top and bottom here, we're left with d by dx. So this is the chain rule. And if you forget that, remember, go back and watch the chain rule. <laughs> so now I can differentiate y squared because I want to differentiate it with respect to y. So d by dy of y squared is just 2y. And then we still have this dy by dx here. So I'm left with this equation. 2x plus 2y multiplied by dy by dx equals 0. And now all I simply do is solve for dy by dx like I'm solving for any variable in an equation. So I bring a 2x over to the other side, it becomes negative 2x, divide by 2y, the 2's cancel, and I'm left with dy by dx equals minus x over y. So there, I just found the derivative of a relation. And now, if I wanted to find the slope of, um, say, a tangent at any point on that relation, or on this circle, I simply sub, let's take, for example, this point, 3 and negative 4. I simply substitute both the x value and the y value. And I will find that derivative, in this case, is 3 quarters. So the slope on this circle at that point is 3 quarters. Pretty amazing, eh? So now that we kind of used implicit differentiation, we're going to use it to figure out what the derivative of the natural logarithm of x is, or the ln of x. So let's say we have um, this function here, y equals the ln of x. Well, we can rewrite that using um, logarithmic properties, right? Because the ln of x is just the log of x in base e. So I can just sort of take that e and bring it over here, make y an exponent, so we'll have e to the power of y equals x. Okay, I'm going to work with this. And I'm going to start by taking the derivative of both sides of that equation. So d by dx of e to the y and d 
d by dx of that right side, just the x. Well, the right side d by dx of x is just 1. But the left side, I can't really apply this because I don't have that in here. There's no x's. So I need to change it. Use the change rule. So I'll change d by dx into d by dy and multiply by dy by dx. Right? Again, it works because you can easily cancel the two uh, dy's and are left with d by dx. That's the chain rule. Okay, so now let's apply this d by dy for e to the power of y. We know how to do that. We've learned how to find the derivative of um, natural exponential functions. It's just e to the power of y multiplied by the derivative of y, which is just 1. And then we're left with this, dy by dx. So solve for it. Divide both sides by e to the y. So the derivative of y with respect to x is 1 over e to the y. But we know e to the y is x. So I can just replace that as 1 over x. So this means the derivative of the natural a logarithm, logarithm of x is 1 over x. And we can expand that a little more. Right? If you had y equals ln of x, its derivative is 1 over x. But if you had um, y equals the ln of some function of x, the derivative would just be 1 over that function. And then you multiply by the derivative of that function. And of course, this only works when x is greater than 0. That comes from just your properties of logarithms, um, which you've learned in advanced functions, I believe. All right. Now, since we figured out the derivative of the natural logarithm, what about any other logarithm in any other base? OK, well, let's figure that out. So let's say we have y equals the log in some base, base a. We'll take any base of x. So we'll do the same thing. We'll use our properties of logarithms, take that a, and push that y up there. So we'll have a to the power of y equals x. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to take the natural logarithm of both sides. And I'm doing this for a purpose. Right? It's because I actually know what the derivative of the natural um, logarithm already is. So let's start with that. And see, you'll, see, you'll see where I'm going with it. So here we have the ln of a to the y equals the ln of x. Now again, I can use logarithmic properties and bring this exponent y in front as a coefficient um, of that natural logarithm. So I have y ln a equals the ln of x. And then I can solve for y. Right? So y simply equals the ln of x divided by uh, the ln of a. And since a is just going to be some, some number for whatever base you have, um, that's just a constant there. Now I can find the derivative of both sides of the equations. So the left side we get dy by dx. On the right side I get the derivative of this. Okay, so we already know, like I told you, this is why I took the ln of both sides. We know the derivative of ln to the x. 1 over ln to the a we can pull out. Because it's just going to be a constant. So here we have 1 over ln to the a multiplied by the derivative of ln x, which we figured out previously is simply 1 over x. So the derivative of any logarithmic function in base a is simply 1 over the natural logarithm of a multiplied by 1 over x. And again, we can expand that if you were to have, say, uh, the natural, uh, not the natural, but um, the logarithm in base a for any function of x is simply 1 over that function um, and one times 1 over that natural logarithmic of the base a and then once again multiply by the derivative of that function. And we're going to do some examples with both of these so you can see how we apply them. So our first example here is an example um, just with how we use implicit differentiation. So we have this relation, 15y squared equals 2x squared. And it says, determine d by dx. All right, I'm going to do it over here so I have lots of room. So we have 
y squared equals uh, 2x squared. I left a space on purpose because I'm going to take the derivative with respect to x of both sides of that equation. That's our first step. Um, oh, hold on. That should be cubed. I rewrote it wrong. I can't copy. <laughs> there we go. Now, the right side of that equation is, is easy to work with. But the left side of the equation, we can't find the derivative with respect to x with a variable that's y. So I'm going to have to apply the chain rule here. So I'm going to do d by dy and dy by dx. And so I'm finding the derivative with respect to y of that 15y squared. And that's still going to equal the derivative with respect to x of 2x cubed. Okay, um, so now we can sort of apply this. The derivative with respect to y of 15y squared, well, take the 2, multiply by 15, so we have 30. Subtract 1 from the exponent, 30y. And then we still have this dy by dx. Um, implicit differentiation certainly is where um, um, Lorentz, no, not Lorentz, Leibniz, Leibniz, I could not remember that, I feel bad, I could not remember it. This is certainly where um, Leibniz notation really comes in uh, helpful when you're doing implicit differentiation, or at least I prefer to do it that way. And we have d by dx of, well, let's just apply that derivative there. So take the 3, multiply by 2, so we have 6, and subtract 1 from the exponent, so x squared. Now all we have to do is rearrange the equation to solve for dy by dx. So dy by dx is going to equal 6x squared divided by 30y, but 6 divided by 30 is just um, 1 over 5. So we're left with x squared over 5y. There we go. Okay, so let's move on to example two then. And example two wants us to find the derivative of a natural um, logarithmic function here. So we know what that is. So dy by dx is going to be, so the derivative of, of a natural logarithmic is just one divided by that function there. So we have one divided by x squared plus e to the x, and then we simply multiply that by the derivative of that function, which is x squared plus e to the x. All right, so the derivative of this would be, well, 2 times x, so we have 2x, plus, and the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x, so plus e to the x all over what we had here, x squared plus e to the x. And that's it. So this next example is taking the derivative of a logarithm in base 4. Now, this 5 here, you could leave it there, but I don't know why you would do that to yourself. Before we take the derivative, it'd be much better to just apply a rule or property of logarithms and rewrite this as 5 times the log in base 4 of 2x plus 3. This just makes your life so much easier. And now we can apply the, the derivative rule for logarithm that we derived at the beginning of class. All right, so dy by dx, the derivative is going to be um, 5 is just a constant, so we can pull that out. So 5 times d by dx of that logarithm in base 4. See, that's why we brought out the 5. Makes our lives so much easier. All right. So here we have the 5 out in front. So the derivative then is first 
Since it's base 4, we're going to do 1 divided by the ln of 4. And we're going to multiply it by 1 divided by that function, 2x plus 3. And then we're going to multiply that by the derivative d by dx of that function, 2x plus 3. And once we do all of that, well, on the numerator, we have the derivative of this. So derivative of 2x plus 3 is just 2. And multiplied by 5, that just gives us 10. And on the denominator, we have the ln of 4. And we can multiply that by 2x plus 3. And that's it. We're done. There's your derivative dy by dx. So you have some practice questions. Have fun.